Hello, I'm Anna Mackay and this video is on quadratic optimization. So what is quadratic optimization? Thinking about that word optimization, where else have you heard that? To optimize something? So the process of finding the maximum or minimum value is called optimization. So that's what we're after, finding the maximum or sometimes the minimum point. Now, if a is greater than zero, thinking in that quadratic, y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, that's in the expanded form, what that a value, um, the significance of that, if it's greater than zero, that will have a shape like this. Um, convex or concave up is called, and if that point therefore will be a what? It will be a minimum, and it's the y minimum. minimum. It's the smallest value that the y values can take because all the rest from that point on would be increasing, be greater than that. Less than zero for A, what shape will that have? It will have a concave, concave down shape. So therefore at the peak that will be called A maximum and it's the Y maximum value at that point. So just putting that point in there, it's the turning point, you have an axis of symmetry, these are all terms I'm hoping you're familiar with now. And what is the x value for that? It is minus b on 2a, where b and a are the coefficients in the quadratic. a is the coefficient of x squared and b is the coefficient of x. And so that is the x value at that point. And if you substitute that in, that's how you get the y value of the min or the max. So the minimum value of y occurs for this x value and same for the maximum. It's the same x value. Okay, and another point of interest that the max or min do occur midway between the x-intercepts if there are any. That'll always be the case. So that's handy to know if you ever need to work them out. So we're asked to find the maximum or minimum value of the following quadratics and the corresponding value of x. So how do we go about that? You identify the, remember it was minus b on 2a. So you need to know your a and your b values. Looking at this quadratic, a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and we get um, 1, 1, and negative 3, pointing out our c value here. What's our next step? Now, thinking about the shape, are we going to have a maximum or a minimum? Our a value is positive, so positive means happy, so you have um, a concave up shape like this. So therefore, are we having a maximum or a minimum now? A minimum. And when does that occur? When x is equal to what? As I said, that minus b on 2a. So just thinking where that comes from, if we have minus b on 2a, that that comes from the minus b would be minus 1 on 2 times by 1. So that's how we get the negative a half there. And the y, now when does that occur? You have to substitute this x value in to the equation. So wherever you see an x, you substitute in a negative a half, taking care with brackets, and work out what y is. So we've substituted that in, working that out to be negative 13 on 4. And so the minimum y value is negative 13 on 4. And the coordinates would be negative a half and negative 13 on 4. Okay, and that's when that occurs. The second one, or oh, I probably jumped ahead a bit too much here. I should have got you to have a think about what our a, b, and c values are, because that's in relation to the coefficients of x squared, x, and the constant term. And don't be put off that they're in a different order. So don't you wouldn't go three, three, negative two, as traditionally happens. You've got to look around and spot them yourself. The shape of this one. Our a value is negative, so we've got a, um, a sad face, a concave down shape. So therefore, are we going to have a maximum or a minimum? A maximum. And when does that occur? When x is negative b on 2a, so you substitute those numbers in, and it, it occurs when x is 3 on 4. And what y value will that give us? We substitute that into the function, and we get 4 eighths. Um, sometimes we use mixed numbers, more often than not we do use improper fractions. 
And so the max value of y is, so the maximum value of the function is 4 and 1 eighth, and that occurs when x is 3 quarters. Okay, an example here. So a gardener has 40 metres of fencing to enclose a rectangular garden plot. So start to picture what shape that's going to be, rectangular, where one side is an existing brick wall. So you might have a think about that before you see the picture. Um, if you have a brick wall and that's fixed, I'll just squiggle that in, and that we, we need rectangular fencing to enclose that. And the total length of all of that fencing is going to be 40 meters. So that's what we're dealing with here. And the two new equal sides are going to be X, center, uh, X meters long. So here's a nicely drawn brick wall with our rectangle, as you can see, equal sides here and we're going to call them x. And now we need to construct an equation. So what have we got to work with? 40 meters we have in total, and we've used up an x and an x amount. So let's have a think what that third side would be. Hmm. So the first part is we're asked to show that the area enclosed is given by this formula. So you have to work out how that's constructed. So area is equal to length times width. Our width we know is x. Now it doesn't matter which way around you do this, you can do width times by length, that's fine. So if our width is x, hmm, we have to somehow identify the length. So the length is this side here. And as I was mentioning before, you've got 40 meters all up. You've used x on this side, x on that as they're bent in. What have you got left? You've got the 40 meters subtract off two lots of x. And so that is the expression for the length that we can now use in our area formula. 40 take 2x and that's exactly what we've been asked to show. So it's quite a simple show there initially. And the second part of this question is now to find the dimensions of the garden up for maximum area. So we eventually want the width and the length and we have to work out well when is there a maximum going to occur for that for this scenario. So um, a maximum, what value of A will we have? To get a maximum, we have it need that shape so that we need less than zero. And the maximum occurs um, when, well, so, okay, so we've got this shape here. So thinking about the, the x-intercepts, if you like, and I'll just rewrite out what our function for our area was. If we expand, well, I'll show you here. So we had 40 take 2x. If we expand that out, we get 40 take, sorry, 2x squared. And so that fits with our a that we're expecting it to be less than zero. As you can see, our a value is negative two. And now, um, did I even need to do that? So we, we've, in the factorized form, we're solving for when that's equal to zero. So what I'm trying to say is put this equal to zero, just like you're solving for x. We need the x-intercepts to then help us find the maximum. Now you don't need to expand that because the null factor law says that x is going to be zero or when the second expression is zero. So we've got, um, I guess, so 2x, when 2x is equal to 40, so when x is 20. So there are two um, x-intercepts and we know that the vertex is where in relation to those x-intercepts. Picturing you've got this shape here, two x-intercepts, it's halfway between. So the vertex is midway, and what's midway between zero and 20? Therefore, when x is 10. So the maximum dimensions are when x is 10. What is x? Ah, x is the width up here. So if our width is 10, width is 10 meters. What's our length? Well, you may remember before that we had the expression for the length, which was 40 take 2x. So we substitute in 10 there and you get 40 take 2 times 10 to give us uh, 20 meters. So go back and read the question. It asked us to find the dimensions of with maximum area and the dimensions mean tell us the width and the length and we've done that 10 and 20. 
Okay, that's the end of this one. The next one, we move into a different chapter, but in the same sort of concept into polynomials now. Make sure you subscribe and tell all your friends if you've got any. Thank you.